Welcome to this CapCut for Beginners tutorial. In this video, we will be creating your first project and adding footage to the media bin. This is the main interface when CapCut has been started. Let's start by creating a project by clicking this bar on the top that says Create Project. And now we will enter the main interface of the software. And that is pretty empty as it is right now. So let's start by importing some footage and I will show you what it can do. We do that by pressing the import button here that will launch a finder that will allow us to locate the footage. We are going to use some drone footage that I shot the other day when I was out traveling with the drone club. So what you need to do now is to mark everything that's located inside the library and then press import. So now you can see that all the footage that we're going to use for this edit is stored in this kind of media bin. And this is a nice selection of video clips in horizontal, vertical. There are some photos and there are some music as well. So now you basically have two options how you're gonna view the footage. You can go to the top here and you can select either to view it as a grid, as we're doing right now, or you can select a list that will basically stack all the clips on top of each other like these similar length bars. And I can go in on each clip and I can simply just move uh, the mouse on top of uh, the clip to preview what is going on inside the clip. And I can preview it through the preview window that's located in the center of the screen. If I don't want to use the mouse, there are shortcuts available that will allow me to yeah, preview a clip. So if I just select the clip and place the playhead somewhere where I want to view the footage, I can use the shortcuts L to scrub forward in the footage, K to stop it again, and J to scrub backwards in the footage. In this way, I can basically review what's going on in the things that I've been recording. Which of the two views that you prefer is up to you. Let's just switch it back to the grid view. I prefer the grid view as this gives me a better overview of the total amount of footage that I'm going to use for the project. When the footage is playing back in the preview window, you have some options available. You can see there's a counter that's running here in the lower left corner. The green or magenta one that shows you where the playhead currently is. The white one that shows you the total length of uh, the video clip. In the center there's a play and pause button that will allow you to stop and start replaying of the footage. On the right side you have a magnifying glass that will allow you to zoom in on certain elements of uh, your footage. So you could say, okay, I want to make it, maybe I want to take a closer look at this house while I'm flying next to it. I have the option to do that. I also have the option to replay everything in full screen. So if I want to take a closer look at the footage just to evaluate the quality, that's an option too. This window that right now says details shows you the details about your project. And you have the possibility to modify your project by pressing uh, the modify option here in the lower right corner. And uh, you can start by yeah, renaming the project. I want to call it Tre Kroner because that's the fortress that, that the, the footage that we're looking at is uh, originating from. I can uh, not change where it's going to be saved to as a project as it is right now. So that needs to stay. I can decide if I want to copy the media to the project or I can decide that I want to have it to stay in the original position. For now, we will just let it stay in the original position. If you plan to move your project, it might be a good idea to copy the files into the project. We want to do a video that is 16 times 9, so we got to keep the 169 aspect ratio. The resolution that will just stay as recorded, most of it is in 4K anyway. The frame rate will stay at 30 FPS and the color space is Rec 709 SDR. That's something that you don't need to mess around with if you have yeah, used the standard coloring options uh, that is offered by the camera that you're using. And in our case, this is our drones. And I press save and as you can see, the changes apply. The lesson that you just watched is part of a full tutorial that covers end to end the workflow from you importing the footage, exporting it into a final video. If you want to watch the full tutorial in one go, you can access it through this card. Or you can watch the individual topics through the playlist below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you on the next one.